Hello, my name is Omar Abbasad. It's, tu it's Tuesday, December 4, 2018 at 12.59 p.m. in Toronto. So um, I blogged uh, when I came home this morning about being let go. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, what I think is going on here. Um, I talked about uh, um, Rohini Bessasar's case. And, um, and I'm going to focus on the uh, number of um, jobs she had and her being consistently fired and uh, her suspicions about her employers trying to keep her out of the job market and getting another job. They were trying to stop her from getting another job. Um, and uh, and um, my experience about um, about uh, getting job a job or, or several jobs in my case four jobs this year and getting fired in a short period of time weeks a few months and some of these were permanent jobs so in my case um, I know I'm being reported on and um, I'm suspecting that it is an experiment of um, being flagged and being monitored uh, because I heard there's not enough room in prison and it's a preemptive move. I'm at a, uh, I was seen as at risk and I was being monitored um, by Gord, who was uh, a building superintendent um, at the time I started um, getting monitored. And in order to get me on that list of um, people who are being monitored, the person making the reports about me have to make criminal reports, such as I suspect that she's a prostitute, I suspect there's drugs in her place, um, and whatever else. Uh, so the person has to be seen in a criminal light by the police. This happened several years ago in my case, and interestingly enough, I started becoming aware of it right after 9-11. So, uh, especially from Chinese residents. Suddenly I was seen as a suspicious person on the bus. Actually the day of 9-11, it was like um, um, an, a, a, an immediate shift in perspective. And a lot of brown skinned people act, uh, um, actually experienced this. So, and this continued. Um, so, um, the flagging is, uh, is um, causing harassment, and harassment in public and harassment in the workplace. And uh, especially in the last five years, uh, the harassment in the, work, in the um, public and in the workplace escalated and is still escalating. So I talked about this in other videos, but, um, and I mentioned this in uh, my video this morning. It seemed to me that I'm suspecting very strongly that people who, of course, are not terrorists, not prostitutes like myself, uh, I was in school working full-time as an accountant um, and uh, at the time there was no uh, that I could see or experience um, overtly and there was no harassment in the workplace as right now as in the last workplace for example uh, it's openly done um, because there are several flags on me and each monitor, who could be a citizen, anybody, it could be anybody, it could go to the police, I'm suspecting, or through the court, um, and sign me out. Because the court, um, the court, because uh, I heard Badr Nizar, who was the first public monitor that I knew, that I, I'm starting to realize um, was, um, was uh, monitoring me in the workplace as, is, as somebody who was signed out. 
um, I didn't know at the time. In retrospect, I'm starting to realize this was actually what happened in the workplace. Um, so, uh, of course, this was never disclosed to me, so I did not know. Um, so, uh, this, 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 um, the flagging by each monitor was progressively criminalizing me. And uh, it got to the point where at, pr at the present time, based on the harassing comments I'm experiencing, it's absolute that I'm a prostitute. It's absolute that I have a mental illness. It's absolute that I'm permanently flagged because I've been flagged for years and I'm completely at risk. And uh, that's absolute too, I'd imagine. And uh, I can't find, well actually, let me rephrase that. I can't keep, I could find jobs. I can't keep jobs because I'm mentally unstable. And this is the goal of hiring and firing. I suspect that the companies who did hire me in the last few years was on a list, a waiting list to hire me because I was on a list of targeted individuals because of this reporting. And uh, the team that is managing this monitoring has an agenda and the agenda is to have me mentally committed as a target or in prison, charged and in prison. So I have to be seen as somebody who is mentally ill to be committed and I have to be seen as somebody who's criminal to be charged. So the way the, the, um, the uh, information flows is Anywhere I am, including my, in my family, these people around me who has contact with me, even once, uh, can be a source. They would re make a report. Somebody comes up, comes up to me and talk to me, they make a report. Um, so the, this report will feed into the, manage, the team, the manager, um, and the manager will make decisions based on the inf information that uh, is fed into this team. So there are mock trials, and each team has, oh, actually each manager has a case. And in these mock trials, you're found guilty or innocent. And if you're guilty, then you're uh, disciplined. And uh, the, really criminal, uh, the, the real criminal aspect of this is, um, these teams are hooked up to gangs, criminal gangs with tasers, lasers, microwave technology, sonic technology, and so on, to inflict pain, to torture, to discipline, quote unquote. Um, and uh, and uh, so that they, um, the more criminal the report, the more torture you're subjected to. And also, uh, another side of this is the trafficking side. When the person from the companies put their name on the list. Um, I'm next, she's next. Um, this is trafficking because the, um, the imprisonment aspect of this, putting somebody in prison, remote prison, remote custody, is uh, instead of putting you in physical four walls, uh, you're installed may be chipped, but a chip is not needed to be tracked. Uh, you could be tracked with a retinal scan it, it, or a, a thumbprint. Um, so you're uh, illegally surveilled, satellite-based um, uh, surveillance, and uh, you are tracked everywhere you go, including inside the building. So when this report is in the workplace, and this surveillance is in the workplace, it takes the form of you being, in, being seen inside of the building in your workplace, in the bathroom, naked, because this image is naked. It's of you, naked, silhouette form. And maybe very, very uh, clear, where you can see people's genitals uh, and uh, all the openings in your body very, very, very clearly. Now, another step to that, a real, 
criminal side of this is that you are remotely raped. And that's easily done, especially with men, where they hit your penises with a laser. That's rape. So, uh, and of course, men could be raped easier than women because their, their genitals are external rather than internal. And men are raped, they just don't talk about it. So, um, so this is, uh, this is uh, the trafficking that goes with this flagging um, program. So in my experience, um, I get burning sensations between my legs and, and um, the sensation of somebody groping my breast at my desk. And I have been experiencing that for at least the last four jobs, very much so. And, uh, and uh, it's interesting that outside my window, um, uh, patrons, Chinese and uh, other, other ethnic groups as well, but because I'm living in a mainly Chinese area, it's mainly Chinese, uh, they, um, they drop hints about um, whose name is on the account and he can see you and he could touch you all remotely, of course. And this I heard is imprinting. So you are imprinting the person who could see you and you're supposed to let the person see and touch you. And you're supposed to do certain things for the person. Here's what the person likes. Open your legs. He likes to feel his hands inside of you. Now this is even more sophisticated technology, haptic technology being put into the, into the program. Keep in mind, this is covertly done because none of this is, is disclosed. But, um, the uh, be, even though it's not disclosed and it's covertly done, the trail that's left by the program, by running the program, is consistent with trafficking, with slavery, conspiracy to enslave, conspiracy to mentally commit, um, and being generally targeted. The trail will show that. So I think that I am being trafficked, and I think I've been trafficked for a long time, just uh, in a subtle way. And uh, I was flagged for a long time. The trafficking aspect probably was going on since I was really young, in the form of voyeurism. And the testing uh, it was probably going on when I was really young too, like brain mapping, that probably would have been going on for a long time because uh, when I went to school, uh, in high school, I scored high marks most of the time. So um, testing are done on extremely intelligent people. They don't test on not so intelligent people because um, it's useless. So they, they choose very intelligent people to test. Rohini Besasa had an MBA, she had a CSC, and she had a degree in in uh, molecular biology, extremely high IQ. And she said that she was being experimented with. And she, uh, her uh, career have the same um, pattern, a working career has the same pattern of being hired and fired in a very short space of time. And uh, being fired for not being a fit. Well, my question is, when somebody hires you on, based on a resume, they're making a judgment call about whether you're fit or not, and a personality call. So when you're fired for not being a fit after two weeks, um, what else is going on? Two weeks or eight days is not enough to determine in a fair way whether the person is a fit for anything. Sometimes a uh, relationship starts off on a, on a rocky base, in a rocky basis and it works out. Sometimes a person have um, issues in the first week or two and it works out. It's not giving the person a fair chance to be firing, in firing the person in two weeks. So what else is going on in my case? Well, this is exactly what's going on, I suspect. I, su I, su excuse me. I suspect that uh, I am being trafficked and I'm being passed around from job to job 
and within the job I'm being passed around. People taking turns to, to monitor me, to look at me share, specifically to look at me in the bathroom so they can make nasty comments about what I do in the bathroom because this is exactly what happened in the last job, in the last few jobs actually. And I'm saying the last few jobs it, it, only because it's escalated since I heard Rick from Give and Go has his, uh, joined me and took full responsibility for me. Um, I've been getting sick. Um, I've been getting um, uh, pulses of pain repeatedly. That's consistent and marks on my body, like um, burn marks on the skin and bruises underneath the skin. That's consistent with being hit with a laser, burning sensation and pain and bruising, which is consistent with blood tests that, that I had recently. There's two names that I keep um, getting updated about outside my window, Rick, Gokar and Hazel, and Carlos. They all like to hit. So there is no mental illness here. Uh, I heard the report about me is uploaded and it's available t uh, to be seen by anybody. And it's in the government's hands. So I'm no terrorist. Uh, I'm not a prostitute, never was. Um, and uh, um, the, uh, the firings do not reflect my inability to keep a job. It does reflect, however, trafficking. Talk to you another time.